when you're in the IT profession, it's not very long before you wind up with one of these. A box full of assorted cables. Yes, I should be more organized, <laughs> but we got all different kinds of uh, different connectors and different kinds of cables. There's a there's a coax I can see in there. There's uh, Ethernet cables, probably two or three different Ethernet cables in there. Probably some video cables, all different kinds of stuff. Wow, what a rat's nest that box is. I really should be a better IT person and straighten that out a little bit. Uh, but anyway, you'll run into all these kinds of cables, and you're going to need to be able to identify what you're looking at. You'll need to know whether that's a, a coax cable or an Ethernet cable or not related to networking at all. Maybe it's a video cable, HDMI, uh, firewire cables, whatever different kinds of cables there are. And in this nugget, we're going to be addressing particularly network cable, and we're going to start here with copper-based network cables. So starting here with copper, let's take a look at the transmission speeds. Now, one thing to understand is there, you'll hear this described different ways. Data transfer rate, speed, bandwidth, uh, what's another? throughput. And, and if you want to split hairs, of which I have none, uh, there are some differences, some subtle differences between those. But for our purposes, we'll all consider them synonymous. Now, one of the things that's going to be a factor in speed is something called megahertz. Now, <laughs> what is that? Uh, I just took a friend of mine to the dentist, and his mouth is all hurt, hurt and swollen, and he says that he megahertz, but that's not the kind of megahertz we're talking about here. The kind of megahertz we're discussing here is this. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> what in the world did I just draw? Well, think of a timeline, okay? So this is the beginning of the timeline, and this is the end, you know, we're on into the future, and within a certain period of time, signals can be sent. And this applies not only to networking, but also to things like processors, for example. So this would be the top of a cycle, and this would be the bottom of a cycle. And together, they represent one megahertz. By the way, a megahertz means a million times. Okay, so this really means a million times uh, in a given period of time. And if I have multiple uh, cycles here, that's one cycle, that's two cycles, that's three cycles, that's, I guess I got four cycles written there in total, you know, there's one, two, three, four, uh, four total up and down cycles there. Well, then now we have, since a megahertz is a million, that's four million cycles per whatever the t duration of time is. Usually it's per second. So imagine with you, me, if you will, that this timeline represented one second. So the number of megahertz can be a factor. So let's uh, erase all of that and start over again. Let's do our timeline again. What if I have some technology or some kind of method or medium, some kind of material that would allow me to cram twice the number of megahertz in the same one second? Okay, we're still on one second here, but now I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I've doubled my, uh, I've, I've compressed time, so to speak. I've compressed in such a way that I can now transmit twice as much, theoretically speaking, in the same period of time. Now, there are other factors that will come into play here. Uh, the kind of copper you're using, the thickness of the copper, whether it's shielded, and some other things we'll talk about here in the future. But I just want to point out, first of all, megahertz, okay? Uh, that will have a factor in how fast something goes. Uh, bandwidth here, as we look at this, we have measures of this, okay? So normally we talk about it in terms of megabits per second. So. Uh, we think of this in terms of internet speed, for example. If I'm in a cafe um, and I'm getting, oh, 80, 100 megabits per second, you, there's tools you can use, you know, apps on your phone you can use to, to test that and stuff. Uh, well, that's pretty good for a cafe, all right? In my home, I'm usually getting four or 500 megabits per second. And my, my ISP, my internet service provider, uh, which is Cox is the name of the company in my area, they say that I can get up to a gigabit per second, okay? That's gigabits per second, okay? One gigabit per second. Um, I, I paid for it once, and I never got any faster than 500 megabits, so I just went back to the cheaper plan. Anyway, so these are measures of speed, and networking usually going to see megabits per second, gigabits per second. Do not confuse megabits per second. Notice the lowercase b there with megabytes per second. That's uh, a different data rate and everything. A byte, megabyte. A byte is 8 bits, so that's a multiple of 8 there. Uh, or gigabits per second with gigabytes per second, okay? 
Uh, we're not going to go into all the details of that, but for networking discussions, it's megabits per second and gigabits per second. Uh, and again, the actual throughput that you get might be slower than advertised. Now, the kind of network cable that is prevalent out there will be one of two types. This type, which is coaxial cable, looks like what you would plug into the back of a cable box or something, but it may actually be different. It might look the same, but it might actually be different. We'll talk about that in a future nugget. And then in this nugget, we're talking about this kind of cable. Let me unstring this. This would be an Ethernet cable. And uh, there's several different standards of Ethernet, several different generations of Ethernet. They all look the same externally on first glance. And we'll look at this more specifically here coming up. However, I do want to talk to you about the rating of the different types. Okay, so again, visually they'll all look the same. But in modern networking with Ethernet cables, and these are all Ethernet cables that we're talking about here, you have several different categories. Okay, we all usually just call this Cat5, and it's capable of 100 megabits per second in terms of the network throughput. Uh, it operates at 100 megahertz. Remember this? Okay. It, it gives us 100 megahertz per second. And that's part of how it's able to achieve the 100 megabits per second. Now, it's not a one to one relationship here. Okay. That's not megahertz equals megabytes. Okay. Um, however, the more megahertz you can get, the faster you can go. So, here with Cat5e, which was an improvement on Cat5 we had still 100 megabits per second at 100 megahertz, but with the proper network cards, network equipment, network switches and so forth, um, in environmental conditions, you could get up to one gigabit per second. So that's pretty fast on uh, Cat5e. And it uses 350 megahertz in order to achieve that speed, in addition to other factors, such as how the wires are twisted inside of the cable and some other things. Again, we'll talk about that more coming up. Then we had Cat6 and then Cat6a. What happened to Cat6e? We have a Cat5e, why not Cat6e? It just never got standardized. Uh, some, some manufacturers, in fact, were creating uh, cables that they called Cat6e, but it never really got ratified. So it really went from 6 to 6a. Don't ask me why, just kind of weird. Uh, but this is capable of 1,000 megabits per second, also known as a gigabit per second, okay? That's just another way to say a gigabit per second is a 1,000 megabits per second. It operated at 250 megahertz. And then you could even go with a cat category 6A, okay, that's 6A. You could get 10 gigabits per second at 500 megahertz. Now let's talk here about Ethernet. Now what is Ethernet? Ethernet is an access method. It's how the data is put onto the wire, okay? However, we usually call these Ethernet cables, and henceforth, that should be considered acceptable, uh, even though Ethernet does not have anything to do directly with what this is made of and what the connectors look like or anything like that, okay? But we'll just call it an Ethernet cable, and again, that'll be considered acceptable. Uh, an Ethernet cable will include twisted pairs of wires, and these wires are twisted around one another within that jacket that I showed you. The jacket is the you know, the white exterior for this one, they're all different colors, uh, but this particular one's kind of an off-white. Uh, the outside of that is the jacket, okay? Now, the reason why they're twisted is to avoid crosstalk and other types of interference. Because if you have crosstalk and interference as data is being sent across that wire, then it will slow the wire down. Uh, both sides of the transmission will have to say, I didn't get that, can you resend that again, okay? Um, Roger, Roger, you know. Uh, so a lot of retransmissions would have to take place if network communication is even possible. So that's why the pairs are twisted to avoid that kind of a problem. Now, the most common kind of network cable you're going to see here, or Ethernet cable, is going to be something called unshielded twisted pair, or UTP. And just doing a quick uh, search right here, uh, you can see that it brings up many different images as such. And this is my, what it might look like. I'm just going to click on one of these pictures. And there it is, okay? So you can see here that what this really is is eight separate wires, or another way to look at it is four pair, right? So, for example, brown, white, brown, that's one pair, okay? One pair. Blue, white, blue, that's the second pair. Uh, green, white, green, that's the third pair. And orange, white, orange is the fourth pair. Total of eight wires. We have an external cladding around all four of 
those pairs and each one of the copper wires themselves you can see there's copper right here each one of the copper wires themselves also is insulated with the plastic jacket of its own this type of network cable the unshielded twisted pair is the most common ethernet cable that you will see out there uh, there's another type that's called shielded twisted pair which we'll come up with next here uh, this is one of the reasons why we see it so prevalent is that it's inexpensive it's prevalent it's uh, got a long range for it so you can have one single cable that's up to 100 meters wow that's a long ways that's over a football field in length that's how i think of all the distances uh, anyway uh, you're probably not going to get one that goes really literally 100 meters because that's a pretty long run uh, normally it's going to be connected to intermediary network devices routers switches uh, wall jacks even stuff like that okay uh, but it could go to 100 meters and i would definitely be aware of this okay that's kind of an important number to know about when it comes to networking also you will have something else called a shielded twisted pair or stp this type of network cable is going to be less common one of the reasons why is because it's more expensive it's about usually about 30 percent more expensive than unshielded twisted pair and this will protect against environmental factors that could affect the signal. Usually it's going to be electromagnetic interference or EMI. So there might be factory equipment that is operating near that network cable uh, and sending, sending out uh, electromagnetic signals and stuff. That would interfere with the data that's trying to transmit across that wire. So we would want to use shielded network cable for that, STP. Uh, or you could be running along other high powered cables or, you know, a lighting ballasts, stuff like that. This type of a, of a cable does require grounding. Now, normally the grounding will go a lot of different places. So uh, I'll show you here in a moment the actual shielded twisted pair cable. Uh, but you'll see metal all the way through from the connector. It, then you'll see metal inside of the jacket. It's actually kind of a, like a foil like material that shields it and eventually it'll connect usually into a switch and the switch itself is also grounded okay so there's going to be grounding all the way through the cable now now again here i just did a quick search for stp cable and of course there's abundant abundant results here now, as we take a look at this let's look at one of these examples uh this one here for example you can see that each pair has its own wrapper it's like a, a metallic foil like wrapper that insulates each pair of wires. That's one way that that can be done. Uh, another way that you will see this sometimes will be, let's see if there's a good example, this one, okay. So this one, each pair, as you can see, has its own little wrapper, but there's also, in this case, an additional wrapper that goes around all pairs inside of the jacket. So that's a little bit about the speed of the cables, as well as the different types of cables, and pr primarily, uh, unshielded twisted pair and shielded twisted pair stick around for the next nugget where we'll talk about how you actually connect the cables and wire them i hope this has been informative for you i'd like to thank you for viewing thanks for watching subscribe here to get the latest from cbt nuggets also if you're new to it or are interested in an it career visit cbtnuggets.com and sign up for a free trial